Welcome back everybody. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna install some side markers. So they are by Axial. And we'll start the uh, unboxing now. All right, so we got both of them unboxed. So you can clearly see they got them labeled as front and rear. And they both look the same. They are different lengths. And you see this one's the same way. So I decided to go with the clear ones just because I think the clear looks better on like a gray car and a white car, which I had a Corvette C6 before and I actually put some that were kind of like this. Uh, they were a different brand, but I put them on my Corvette and I mean, I think they look great. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you what the stock ones look like and a cool little uh, design that they have. But let's take a look at them. All right, so in case you didn't know, the front and rear side markers actually have kind of a honeycomb design. You can't really see it with the rear ones as good as you can the front, but I'll show you the front. You can clearly see how those have the honeycomb look. But one thing I don't like about them is it's just the middle right there that lights up. But with our new axial side markers, we're actually going to get a whole LED strip from the front to the back, and that's going to be for the, the front ones and the rear ones. But anyways, we'll get started with the rear. The rear side markers are pretty easy to change. You look up at the electrical connector, there's a little red tab. And most of them, you just take your fingernail, pull it out, and all you're going to do is just press down. Connectors removed, and there's a tab up front. Just push that tab, side marker will start popping out. Just slide it out, and that easy. Also, real quick, once you have the side marker out, if your car is a few years old, which mine only has 1100 miles on it right now, so it's not really dirty inside here. But once you remove yours, you might find that there's a lot of dirt and debris and stuff in there. As you can see, my car is really dirty right now, but this is actually pretty clean. So I'll just take a rag and kind of wipe it out just a little bit. Okay, we got the area clean. So side markers gonna go in like this right here. You can see there's a little tab. It's on this end. And you're just gonna take and slide that in there. Kind of push towards the back of the car and it'll snap right in. Real simple to hook it back up. Just take your plug, push it in there. Get a little snap out of it. Push that in. All right, got the driver's side and passenger side installed. Now let's take a look. And you can see how that LED goes all the way across. Now, one thing I do want to mention is, now I did get the axial clear side markers, but if you go on American Muscle, which I'll try to get the links for the clear ones and the other ones, which are the tinted ones, you can get tinted ones from them as well. So they'll come pre-tinted. And I think they might have a light smoke and then a dark smoke one. So if you don't want, if you want to smoke that just a little bit, but not too dark, you can go with that option. But I'll get those links for you. Just look for them in the description below. Now, for the front side markers, they're a little more tricky than the rear side markers. So, on the rear, you actually have clear access on both sides from the bottom. It's pretty easy to get to. For the front ones, the passenger side is it's not too bad to get to, but the driver's side, which we'll get to in a second, you have to actually take some stuff out to get to it. And let me show you this passenger side, and I'll have to put down the camera when I change it out, but let's take a look at it. Look down in there. You can see... It's got the same connector and also has the same snap that's on the front. So you're just gonna remove it the same way that you do the back ones. As you can see, we got the passenger side installed and that's full LED as well, front to back. Now, I just want you to take a look at how bright the new ones are compared to the old ones. Which, the old ones, yeah, you get like a little cool honeycomb design, but 
I think I'd rather take a full LED that's a lot brighter at night. All right, on the driver's side, you're gonna need a few tools. So you'll need an eight millimeter socket, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, and you're gonna need a T25 bit. So first we'll start with the eight millimeter. So you have one that's here, and then you're gonna have one for the clamp down there, which you can, you can use a flathead as well for that. So we'll start this bolt. Now this bolt's a little long, so it does take a little bit to get out. There you go, got that one out. So we're gonna set it aside. Now we'll start with the clamp. Let's hold them on the air filter. Get that loosened up. Got that one done. Now your 10 millimeter, you're gonna need that for your coolant reservoir bolts. Now we've got all those bolts out. There's a little cover up front that you need to take out. And if you're doing this on a Hellcat, you're gonna to need to get to your headlight intake tube. So now what we're gonna do is take this little hose off right here, push that to the side. And we're gonna to begin to work on pulling this air filter up. filter out. There's your Hellcat intake tube. Set all this stuff aside. Okay, got the air box out of the way. So now if you look down in there, you'll see there's a little spot down there where you can get your hand. And you'll have to undo your electrical connector. And it's kind of difficult, but if you have uh, small hands and small arms, like I do, you'd be able to get up there to that snap. All right, now we got the driver's side in. So one thing you wanna do before you start uh, assembling everything back together, just test it out and make sure it works. That's the last thing you want is for it not to be connected right, and then you gotta take and remove everything you just put back in. All right, so that T25 bit that I was talking about, this is what you're gonna need it for. So putting the air box in is a little more trickier than actually taking it out. So you, you're gonna have to disconnect the air filter from the box which there's a screw here and here, which I've already removed. And then your last one's gonna be over here. And get that one removed right quick. All right, got that out. And also, get this reposition. If you look down here, there's a tab and you have to take and push the air filter forward for it to drop out of that tab. Now, once you get that done, you can actually take and remove your air filter. So we'll set it aside. All right, now I got the camera reposition. So you're gonna take your headlight tube. You're gonna kind of get it in place. Start working your air box down. Gonna go down at an angle. So we got our box position. Now, one thing you want to do is you kind of want to leave a little bit of room. So don't push it all the way down because you're going to have to get to those screws to tighten down your air filter. So you're going to take your air filter, slide it down kind of at an angle. And remember, you got that tab that's on the front here. So you want to get in that tab and you want to work your air filter back. Light up just a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna work on lining all this up. Okay. I'm 
supposed to start that one. There we go. I know this isn't the best camera angle, but that's about the best I can get at position and still be able to work with two hands. Right now we've got all these started, we'll go through and start tightening each one up. Remember, you don't have to get these super tight. It's just going in the plastic. All right, now that we got stuff installed, our air filter, double check that tab back there, make sure it's in. Now we're gonna work this air box the rest of the way down. All right, so I got the air box all the way in now. So all I have to do is just tighten up this clamp. Have to install the eight millimeter right here on front of the air box and then we have two 10 millimeter bolts that's holding the coolant tank on Make sure whenever you tighten this down, you got it all the way flush. Snug that down. So we just got to tighten down this bolt right here and this one right here. Let's hold on your coolant tank and that's just the 10 millimeters you got to use for that. Short bolts, so they don't take much to tighten down. All right, last thing we got to do is just take and install this cover right here. Work that in on that side. You don't have to move over your hood latch on this side. Work it down past it. And you'll take and work in these snaps right here. So you have one that's down there. So you line it up. The rest of it should go in with these. So something that might be easier for you if you have a rivet tool is you can take and turn your wheel all the way and you can cut and remove these. And you can take that fender liner and you can just peel it back and that'll keep you from having to remove the air box. All right, so that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully this helps you out if you're deciding to upgrade your side markers. Uh, if you will, do me a huge favor. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you get all the videos. And also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. See you next time.